Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. In this video, we're going to find the volume of a solid that gets rotated about an x-axis. Um, so this is kind of an introductory uh, rotational solid. Um, and I'm not telling you what method to use here. We're going to derive the method, not derive actually. We're going to figure out the method to be used uh, once we uh, draw this out. Of course, by the title of this video, you should know what the method is that we're going to use, but um, you should also be very aware that during some type of examination or something, your professor or instructor will not likely tell you what method to use. You have to figure it out as you move forward. So let's first start by graphing these equations. So here's my x and y axis. And I'll go ahead and start by graphing x equals 2 just because it's a little bit easier to start there. So um, 1, 2, and I will use blue to graph that. And now I'm going to go ahead and graph x equals 1 plus y minus 2 quantity squared. Well, you know that's going to be a parabola, uh, and it's going to open in the positive y direction because uh, it, the y squared is positive. So it's going to open to the right. Um, it's been shifted up two units, and the initial x value is 1. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and shift up one, two units. I know the initial vertex is at um, one comma two. And that actually you can, uh, if you recall, sorry, you probably can't see the equation. Um, you can recall that from your algebra series courses that if you have an equation of the form, and I'm gonna move the one to the other side. If you have an equation of the form like that, or actually of any form, uh, you could even deal with, and I'm gonna write this in a different, in gray, so that you know it's not what we're dealing with. But what if we were given this, or this, or anything like that, right? So each of these are shapes that have the point uh, x equals 1, y equals 2 in common as far as um, a, a central point uh, for their graph. So the very first one, the one we're dealing with, is a parabola. Its vertex is at x equals 1, y equals 2. The second one actually is a hyperbola, and its center is at x equals 1, y equals 2. And the last one there is a circle uh, with the center at x equals 1, y equals 2. So you can see the pattern here is that if you can get your equation of the form x minus a number in, uh, in quantity and y minus number in quantity, then you have the center or the vertex of your equation, of your conic section, if you will. So in this case, I know that we have a parabola. It opens to the right, as I said earlier. Uh, and what I want to do actually is go ahead and figure out when x is 2, uh, what does y have to be? So I, just because um, I want to know where it intersects that curve. So when x is 2, we get 1. And then we have this y minus 2 quantity squared, or in other words, plus or minus 1 is equal to y minus 2. So y, therefore, must be either 3 or, uh, let's see, 2 minus 1, 1. So it meets this curve at a height of 3 or at a height of 1. So we have something like this. And by the way, it keeps going. It's a parabola. It keeps going this way. But we're not really concerned about that. What we want to do is take the region that is bordered by those curves, so this region right here, we want to rotate it about the x-axis. So we want that rotation. Now, sometimes in my classes, I will tell my students that, you know, I want to draw this first, but then uh, maybe outside of this, I will go ahead and redraw um, so that I can see the surface as it's rotated about, so I can get an idea. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to just kind of chicken scratch out what that object looks like. Sort of. I mean, you know, it sort of looks like this, right? And we know that we're going to, and I'll just draw a dashed line here. We know we're going to rotate that around 
an x-axis even though I'm not really drawing axes on here I know that I want to rotate it around and so I will get a similar shape on the other side there's somewhat of a danger by doing it this way um, and then I'll be doing some erasing just to get the actual shape done properly but what you're going to do is you're going to get this outer shape the outer edge going around and then the inner edge also okay and dash this out now because it's actually underneath behind the curve you won't be able to actually see that same thing here this is actually underneath but this will be solid because you can see that outside actually this will be solid too now that I'm thinking about it and I'll go ahead and rotate this around too so that's as good as I can personally do. I'm just not a great grapher, but you can kind of get the idea of what this looks like. It's almost like a half donut or like a bagel. That's, a, that's actually what it looks like, a slice of a bagel. So now that I've drawn that out um, in my wonderful drawing skills, um, now I'm going to draw out a slice. But we have to determine how we want to slice this. So let's go back up to the original graph here. And think about the possibilities for a slice. So I could slice this vertically. However, there's a big danger of slicing this vertically. So I'm going to draw it like this. Over-exaggerate the slice because I'm going to erase this in a moment. So if I slice it vertically like that, the upper edge, the upper boundary, is defined by x equals 1 plus the quantity y minus 2 squared, and the lower boundary is defined by that very same curve. That means that we've got an issue. Um, it's not, an, it, we can overcome that. I'm not saying that it cannot be overcome, but it's just that when your upper and lower boundaries for your slice are identical, it can lead to some issues. So um, we, we would like to try something different if we could. So a vertical slice, because the top and bottom are defined by the same function, and maybe I should write this down. So I think this warning kind of sums it up. Just try to avoid slicing so that it uses the same function for the edges. So the top and bottom here border is defined by the same function. So we'd like to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is erase that slice. And in its place, I'm going to slice horizontally. And so the representative slice looks like this. I'll actually even shade that in so that we can really see the slice going on. So you can see when I rotate that slice around, I will get not a disc anymore, but I should get some type of shell. And again, I'm just representing the slice here so that we can see it, but I'm actually, because uh, I have mentioned it previously, I'm a terrible artist, so I will go ahead and draw this slice by itself to see what the shell looks like. It sort of looks like this. So you see that's kind of a ring or a shell. Some people will call it, most people will actually call this a shell, but I often call it a ring because that's exactly what it looks like to me. And we know that the volume of a ring um, having derived this in your class probably, is going to be the distance around, and remember the distance around this ring, it's like a circle, so the distance around the ring is going to be 2 pi times the radius of the ring, and I put r sub i because um, the we don't know what the radius is. Uh, for every The radius changes for every little slice we do, so I'm just calling it r sub i. So the distance around is the, is the circumference, 2 pi r. And then we have this height here, h sub i, technically speaking. So I'll call that h sub i. And then we have, uh, let's see, distance around times the height. That's only two dimensions. So technically speaking, meters times meters, that's going to be meters squared. And so that'll be an area. We need one more dimension. And that comes from the fact that we have a width here. So I'm going to call this a, a wiggle in the radius. It's actually a width. It's a, either delta y or delta x. But when I'm talking about it in general, I'll just call it a wiggle in the radius. So again, what you're looking at here is the circumference, the height, and the width when you do that. So that's what we're going to use for our formula for the volume of the ice slice. 
So let's go ahead and go again back up to the picture here and slowly start putting together the volume formula. And I'm going to go to the right, actually. So the volume of the i slice we've just said is 2 pi r sub i, r sub i being the radius at the ith moment, uh, times the height at the ith moment, delta r, circumference, height, and width. Now we have to slowly piece apart what each of these uh, quantities is. So let's think about the radius. The radius, when you rotate this around to get the shell right here, right, this distance is the radius. Let's go to our picture to see our slice. And I'm using red too much, so I'm going to use a different color green here. The radius always goes from the central axis of rotation all the way to your slice. And if I look at that distance, that's a y value. The top of that distance, right? So let me go ahead and just note um, the top of this distance here is some y value. I'll call it y sub i. The bottom of that rotation is another y value called zero. So top minus bottom is always how I do things uh, to determine radius. So top is y sub i, the bottom is zero. So in other words, the radius is going to be y sub i. The height of this shell. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. Here's my picture again. This is the height. The height is just this distance from left edge to right edge. So let's go to our picture. The height is the distance from the left edge here to the right edge here. Now remember, when you're com computing distances like that, it's always um, right minus left or top minus bottom. So um, yeah, distances, let me write that down. Distances or radii are always computed using either right minus left or top minus bottom, just depending on if you're doing things vertically or horizontally. In this case, we're looking at a horizontal distance, so it'll be the right x value minus the left x value. Well, the right x value here is 2. And the left x value is defined by our equation. That's what the left x value is. So what I'm going to do is actually write them as just x sub l for left and x sub r for right initially. So the width of that piece, or what I'm calling the height here, is going to be called x sub r minus x sub l, right minus left. And again, we still have this delta r, which we'll worry about in a moment. 2 pi y sub i. Um, now the, maybe I should not worry about the delta r in a moment. Maybe should I should worry about the delta r right now, because you need to kind of know what are you slicing with respect to? And if you look at the width of that slice, it's a delta y. That's important because I'm going to need that information right now. So, so my wiggle in radius is actually a delta y. There we go. And the reason why I want that again is because I need to know what variables, uh, what variable my equation needs to be in. And if you notice, there's an issue with this equation. We ha we have delta y's, which is fine, and a y sub i there, which is fine. However, we have x's here, which have to go. They have to be traded out for constants or y's. Luckily, as we've worked or seen in our work, the right x value here is 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in. Minus. The left x value here can be rewritten in terms of y using this formula. So the x, left x value is 1 plus the quantity y sub i minus 2 n quantity squared. Let me write that down. So minus, I'm going to say the quantity, 1 plus y sub i minus 2 n quantity squared. And then, and that quantity. So that's x sub right minus x sub left. And then delta y. Notice everything's in terms of y's. I'll clean this up before we use the integral here. So 2 pi y sub i times the quantity. And again, a little bit extra cleanup here. And I'm also going to distribute this y sub i through. And you can check that work if you would, if you so choose. 
So let's go ahead and now say, since we know this is the volume of the ith slice, now we want to know, um, what are we going to do? How, how are we going to integrate this? So I'm very curious. I haven't asked a quiz for this. So I would just like to know very quickly, what are you going to uh, use as your limits of integration? That is, when you build your volume formula, which is going to be 2 pi times the integral um, of some uh, from something to something else of a negative y cubed plus 4y squared minus 3y. And this is dy with respect to y. The question is, what are your limits of integration? So take a moment to think about that and just try to uh, tell me what you think. Okay, so the limits of integration, if you look at the picture here, it goes from a height, we're stacking these slices from a height of 1 to a height of 3. It's not a terrible question, I was just more curious if you could do it. So y equals 1 to y equals 3. And then from this point forward, it is actually a pretty fast integral because you're integrating a polynomial. Let's just go ahead and finish this out. 2 pi, the antiderivative of a negative y cubed is a negative y to the fourth over 4. The antiderivative of a 4y squared is a 4y cubed over 3. And the antiderivative of a negative 3y is a negative 3y squared over 2. And this is again from y equals uh, 1 to y equals 3. Notice that all of our variables are the same, critically important in this course. And now you just have to suffer through some arithmetic, which is not going to be entertaining. So I'm going to pause the video and just quickly fill in the arithmetic here. All right, and it reduces all the way down to 16 pi over 3 cubic units, whatever the cubic units might be. You have to be kind of careful. It's not the calculus that will throw you off. It's all the arithmetic behind the scenes.